Now, me and Pastor Josue, we've known each other for a long, long time, and uh, we, we have been in prayer of, of coming together and doing this work of sharing the love and the message of Jesus with people. And so he's been serving uh, alongside our Spanish ministry in bringing the word. But today I said, hey, could you bring the word for the English experience? And he said, I'd love to. And so we're going to hear from his heart today. Can you welcome him one more time? Pastor Josue. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. God bless you. How many of you guys have enjoyed this summer series yeah. up until now? Yeah. I love it. We, we, started, we started with our first movie, Encanto, which was a, an awesome movie, cartoon movie for kids. And then uh, I, I believe it was The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It was a Western movie. How many of you guys enjoyed that one? It's a good, good, good movie. And then last week, Father's Day, we saw the Godfather, right? You guys remember? I saw, I saw the English service online, so, so I remember. And then, and then today, we're, we're, we're finishing today with uh, Pixels. And so it's, it's an awesome movie. Uh, to be honest, I want to say that um, I want to be honest in church. Uh, I'm not uh, the biggest fan of Adam Sandler's movies, uh, but I did see this one. I, I believe we did see this one when it came out, and, but I couldn't remember the storyline. And so I had to re-watch it again this week and and I want to be honest in church I really did enjoy it minus you know several things but it was a it was a good movie it was a good movie we really enjoyed it and so um I love one of the phrases that um, Sam Brennan says when he's uh he's training some of the army men who are getting ready to battle, I believe is uh, was Galaga or Centipede, one of one of those two, and he says a phrase that just stuck in my head. You know, it was it was it just caught my attention, and I I want to read it for you. And he he says this. He says this. We have trained since childhood. All has been meaningless in all areas of our life. But he says, he goes on and he says, but suddenly it might be coming in hand, handy to saving our planet. All has been meaningless. All has been meaningless. Isn't it true that sometimes we feel that there are seasons in our lives where we feel that nothing is going our way nothing is going our way whether that be in a job or whether that be in school or even at church right sometimes we might be serving God by serving people we could get connected to church and we just feel that there are awkward seasons in our lives that they're just it feels like they're meaningless it, it, it feels like they're, 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 they don't make sense. They don't make sense. And, and maybe you are a, a full-time full -time mom and you, you know, you're, you're taking care of your three kids. Maybe you're carrying one and two others running around. And, and you're just trying to get through the day. Yeah. You're just trying to get through the day because you, you need a break. And sometimes you do get a break, a five-minute break. And, and then you pick up your phone and you open Instagram and you start scrolling and then, and then you see your friends, right? You see your friends and they're, they're doing so good in life and they're, they're getting recognized at their jobs. And, and, and you see your other friends, they're, they're, open, they're starting up a business and they're doing so great and they're doing so good. And then you look at yourself and you're smeared with, uh, your, your shirt is all full of spaghetti sauce or, or some kind of baby food. And, and you ask yourself, what's going on with me? What, what about me? This, this season of my, it seems like everything is, in, is on pause. Or maybe you're not a mom. Maybe you're not a dad. Maybe you're a student. But that be high school or college, right? I know we're in summit right now. But, you know, as soon as school starts, you're trying to get, you're trying to survive tests and homework, and you're trying to, you know, study groups and, and, and everything in between, and you, you, 
and you feel like that's not really what you want to do. And you go like, ah, I don't really know why I'm taking science if I really want to be a music teacher. It, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And, and you feel like nothing is going your way. Maybe, maybe you're helping out. Maybe you're serving God here at church and, and they placed you somewhere where you say, I don't even like computers. I, I like singing and I like, you know, playing. And I don't know what I'm doing here. And so I think it's happened to all of us at one time or another. There are seasons in our life where that seem to us, they seem meaningless. I don't know why I'm doing this, but today I, I want to I wanna ask you a question. What, what if those awkward seasons of life what, what if those seasons of your life right now that are not making any sense, that nothing's going your way, what if that is God setting you up for your near future, for your next best season? What if that, what if this season right now in your life, the one to quote uh, um, Sam Brennan, the, 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 the one that feels meaningless, the one that seems pointless, what if that is God getting you ready for your next best season? Now, like I said, I really love this movie because it reminded me about a story in, in the Bible about another young boy. His name was David. I don't know, you might have some type of background in church. You might have a lot of background in church. But I think all of us at some point or another, we've heard the, the David Goliath story. I think we've all heard that story. And, it, and it's a great story. It's a very famous story. It's a very popular story because nobody... Nobody knew that David was going to defeat the giant Goliath. Nobody expected that. David, the 16-year-old the boy with no experience at war, with no experience with weapons of war, defeated the, the giant Goliath. For once, he was giant. He was a giant. Second, he had been a, a warrior all of his life and so we all love that story we love we love to to be we want to be the David in our story right we want to be recognized we want to be cheered we want to be celebrated we want to defeat the giants of our life but I think sometimes we fail to see the the, the backstory because because there was a David before there was a David and Goliath. And I think that story, the back story, is going to give us an insight into what happened at that battle. And so I want to take you, I want to take you back. I'm not, I'm not going to take you way back. We don't have the time. I'd love to take you way back, but we don't have the time. I'm an outward preacher, but, but today, to, I'm, I'm not going to preach an hour. Don't worry. You're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I want to take you to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. If you're here for the first time, uh, you, don't, you don't have a Bible, don't worry. We're, we'll have the, the scripture up in the screen. Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. And, uh, and this is David. David is going to ask a question. And, and this is David. Let me, let me give you some context. It, David's, David is in the battlefield. There's, there's a big, huge giant out there and, and he's saying stuff like we don't all have to fight just send me one single warrior one single guy and if he defeats me we will serve you we will be your slaves and if I defeat him you will serve us one single guy and then this had been happening for 40 days now and so David is there, David is there, he's listening to what's going on, 
And, and this, is, this, is, this is David in chapter 17, verse 26. He says, Who is this pagan Philistine, anyway, that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? So, so David is getting a little worked up. He's like, he's stressed out. It's like, he's saying, how can you guys let this guy defy the armies of the living God? And so word gets to Saul, who is the king, and Saul sends for David. And so David comes before the king, and we're going to skip some passages. We're going to pick it up here in verse 32, if you can read it with me. He says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of wars since his youth. Now, I want you to really pay attention to this part, because this part is going to be incredibly important for where we're going this morning. Verse 34. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. Now I want to make a pause there because it's very important to note that at this point in the story, this young boy, 16-year-old boy named David, he had already been anointed. What does that mean? He had already been chosen by God to be the next king. Now, nobody knew this. Only his brothers knew that. Only um, his dad knew that. But nobody knew this. He knew that. By this point in the story, David had already been appointed the next king in line after Saul. Now when he says here in verse 34, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. Now that's weird. If I am David... And I have been appointed the next king. I have been chosen to be the next king. And my dad tells me, all right, go back to taking care of the sheep and the goats. I'm going because I'm afraid of my dad. No, I'm not afraid of my dad. I'm going, but all the way over there, I'm saying, this does not make any sense. This is meaningless. What is meaningless? Taking care of sheep and goats? This doesn't make any sense. I shouldn't be doing this. I am the next king of Israel. God just said through prophet Samuel, I am the next king of Israel. What am I doing taking care of the sheep and the goats? Now, my dad's going to hear when I get back because something's got to change. But that's not what happened. That's not what David said. But sometimes, sometimes that is what we say. Sometimes that's, that's what we say. This weird season of my life, it doesn't make any sense. Nothing is going my way. I don't get it. I mean, why do I have to do this? I mean, why do I have to work here? Like, I have a psychology degree. Why am I working here? And we feel like nothing is going our way, and so we want to skip through the season that where nothing is going our way to the season where everything is going our way. But I believe that David, in this story, he was beginning to pick up on something super important. He was beginning, I don't think that he understood completely, but I think he was beginning to pick up on something super, super important. Which was that there are seasons in our lives and that God is doing something even in the seasons where it seems that nothing is going our way. God is working. God is working because that's the way God does things. That's the process of God in our lives. 
in the process of God for our lives, it's, it's very important. Something, sometimes we, we see some, some processes like, like a disadvantage, like a setback. And, and you might be going right now through a difficult time, through a difficult season where nothing goes your way. way to, to quote again, a Sam Brennan, everything seems meaningless. And you might be doing that right now. You might be going through that. But, but I got to tell you today, what we learn from this story is that the process of God is not a setback. That the process of God is not a disadvantage. That the process of God is an opportunity. Say with me, opportunity. Let, let's do it again all together, opportunity. See, the processes of God are not a setback. And sometimes we do see it as a setback. Either we could, we could see it as a setback, we could see it as a disadvantage, or we could see it as an opportunity. And, and, and you might be asking yourself, well, Pastor, uh, an opportunity for, for what? An opportunity for what? I want to continue there in verse 34. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. That's where David is coming from. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from a flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. Now, I really love this next line. He says, I've done it, I've done this to both lions and bears. I love it that he says, I don't care what it is. It could be a lion, it could be a bear, it could be a T-Rex for all I care. But I am going to take care of my father's sheep because that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm doing. That's the process. That's the season that God has, has me in right now. And then 36 let me read it again. I've done this both to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. So, so what are the, this is my question to you. What are, the, what are those seasons in your life? Are you seeing them as a setback? Are you... Do you see them as a disadvantage right now because nothing is going your way? Nothing is going the way you expected? Or do you see that like an opportunity? And you might be asking yourself again, an opportunity to what? Well, the process of God in our lives, it's an opportunity to win your internal battles. Because they... The internal battles that you win right now where nobody's watching, when nobody's watching, those will become your strengths in public. Those battles, see, we see David fighting the, the lion and the bear, and we didn't know about that and he, until he said that to, to King Saul. Like, nobody knows about those fights. Only we know. Nobody knew that, that David was fighting lions and bears way before he fought his biggest battle publicly. And so I think sometimes that our, our struggles, our difficult season is an opportunity to fight those battles and to win those battles. Because God through those things, through those struggles, through those battles is preparing you for the next best season of your life. And if you skip those, listen, 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 listen closely. If, you, if we skip those seasons of our lives, we will not be ready to face the next best season of our life. We got to fight the lion and the bear before we fight the giant. But before we fight the lion and the bear, we also have to be obedient. Because if David would have been like, all right, Dad, you heard it. Next king in line. Not going. He wouldn't have had the opportunity to, to face the lion and the bear. And I was telling 
the Spanish and the Spanish experience this morning I'll switch it up a little bit for the Cowboys to be able to get to the Super Bowl <laughs> they have to get to the playoffs cannot get to the Super Bowl before you get to the playoffs for the for the Cowboys to get to the playoffs, they have to win the season games. And for, in order for them to win the season games, they have to win in the off season. Because all of those things are preparing them for the biggest battle. And so it is with us. We cannot face our giants. We cannot be cheered. We cannot be recognized if we haven't fought the bear and the lion. We cannot fight the bear and the lion if we are not obedient to dad when he tells, who is dad, our God, the father, who tells us, do this, go this way. And if we don't obey, we cannot, you know, be in those seasons where we're getting ready for the next best season. So... The processes of God. So the processes of God in our life are opportunities, not setbacks. Opportunities for what? We, we set one already. Opportunity to improve and cultivate our character. Now, character is the very reason God rejected the first king. Character is the very reason why God rejected Saul and he went looking for another king. And he knew that this new king needed to go through a process to develop and cultivate his character. Back when I was younger than I am today, you know, God gave me the opportunity to play in, in many places and, and venues. And, and I got to play with really, really talented musicians. Not more talented than the guys we have here. Would you give a round of applause for our worship team? They're awesome. I mean, they're awesome. Every time I get here, I mean, I get, we get to worship. It's just, oh my goodness, like a concert every Sunday. Don't miss it. But, uh, you know, I got to play with, with some really, really great musicians. They were talented a thousand more times than, you know, what I could play, what I could do. But I, but I, I started finding, finding out as I, I would hang around with them that uh, they would lack something. They were lacking something. They were lacking character. They were super talented musicians, but they were lacking character. They were lacking in obedience and integrity and patience and humility. And that's what God wanted to show David. That's what God wanted to teach David in that off season when everything seemed meaningless. He wanted to teach, he wanted to teach him um, character to, to cultivate his character. Look at what's, what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 15. He says, But David went back and forth so he could help his father with the sheep in Bethlehem. Now, I want you to focus on this part. But David went back and forth. But David went back and forth so he could help his father. See, See, in that off season, in the season where it's, everything seemed meaningless, see, what God was doing is teaching David to cultivate his character, to correct his character. He was teaching him obedience. And sometimes, you know why we don't get to the next best season of our lives? It's because we lack in character. We cut, because we fail to be obedient to God, and sometimes God is saying, go this way. And you said, I cannot go that way. But what I can do is go this other way. And I'll go three times as hard as I, if I would have gone to this. And then we find ourselves in a, in a season where, you know, 
oh, what's going on? Well, if, if you look back, God told you, go this way, but you weren't obedient to God. And so in this off seasons where everything seems meaningless, God is trying to teach us to cultivate, to correct our character. And so I want to go back and quote Sam Brennan here at the movie. And he says, all, all has been meaningless. And then, and maybe some of us today, right now, we can say, yeah, it feels like everything is meaningless in this season of my life. But the next part is awesome. He says, but suddenly, and if you trust God with your life, if we trust God with our life, knowing that even in this off season where everything feels shaky, where everything feel, is not going our way, if we trust God with our life today, we can get uh, suddenly. But suddenly, everything starts, it's, will start to fall into the right place. And I know some of you might be going right now through, through an off season, a season that I don't, I don't get what God, why God is doing this in my life. I don't get why God is doing this other thing in my life. But if we learn to trust him, the Bible says that for those who love God, all things, what things? Only the good things. No, no, no. All things work together for those who love them. Would you stand up with me as we finish up in prayer? God, we want to thank you for this time that we can have together as a church. As we come to an end of a series, we, my, my prayer and my hope is that you would speak to us through your word. And that even if things are not going our way in this season of life, even if things are not going our way in this season of church, even if things are not going our way in our jobs, in our family, we trust you with our lives. And we trust you that you are trying to teach us something important for the next best season of our life. Thank you for your word. You're a good and gracious God. And we want to trust we want to trust you with everything in our life. In the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you.